Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create this 3D popping effect with rigid body dynamics. But instead of Cinema 4D, we're gonna be achieving this exact same look using the free software Blender 3D. Now, like always, we're gonna start off in our default scene. So we just wanna select everything that's in here, click X and delete. And now I'm just gonna copy and paste my 3D models into my scene. Now, if I turn on the material preview, you see that I have a bunch of 3D Lego heads here. And this is what I'm gonna use for my project. And if you decide that you wanna follow along with the exact same models as well, you can head to my Gumroad page, which is brockcreative.gumroad.com. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll find that I have this 3D Lego head pack and you can get some of them for free by clicking on the free pack. So back to our 3D scene now. I'm just gonna start by grabbing all my 3D models in my scene, right clicking, and then we're gonna set the origin to geometry. And this essentially means all these different dots here, the little anchor points that it's gonna scale from because unlike Cinema 4D's MoGraph tools, we need to do this manually, which means all of our 3D models need to scale from zero to one. So I'm gonna grab all my 3D models once again and click Command or Control A. And then we just wanna apply all transforms. I'm currently away on a business trip, so doing this all on a laptop is a little bit difficult, but we're gonna get through it. So to start, I'm gonna grab all my 3D models once again, and we wanna apply a rigid body dynamics to it, which you can do under the physics tab and then apply a rigid body, making sure that they're set to active. And now if we click play, we're gonna see that all of these models fall straight to the ground. In order to fix this, we wanna to go to our scene properties and then turn off the check mark that says gravity. And now if we click play, these are all staying in place. So in order to get our popping effect, we need all of these 3D models to scale from zero to one. But first we want them all to kind of spawn from the same general direction or general area, I should say. So we're gonna move these all into basically the same spot. So the long way of doing this would be to move them all into the center individually, but we're not here to waste time. So I'm gonna grab all of these once again. Actually, I'm gonna grab them from the sidebar here, right click, and I'm gonna set the origin to uh, geometry to origin. And this now places them all in the exact same spot and now we're going to add a force field into our scene by clicking shift a and adding in a force field which is this top one here and now if we go into this forces setting we want to turn this into the negative so that it pulls it towards the force so to start with i'm just going to set this to minus 1000 and we'll see what that does And I'm sure when you clicked on this video, that is not the effect that you wanted to see, but don't worry, we're gonna fix this up. So for starters, when we hit play on that one, it actually sent all of our objects into the scene at once, but we want them to gradually come into the scene one by one. So just before I do that, I'm gonna move this force into this collection down here, just so it's out of the way. So to set our keyframes without having any issues, what we might wanna do is actually turn the rigid body dynamics off just for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of our 3D objects that are in our scene. And as they all have the same modifier applied, I'm just gonna turn this to passive and then right click and copy to selected. And now if we hit play, nothing should happen. Perfect. So this 3D model here is the one that shows up in our scene first. So in our timeline, I wanna to go to frame zero and we're gonna set the keyframe on the scalar parameters and we're gonna set this down to zero on all of them. Make sure we set our keyframes. If you don't wanna click that individually, you can just click I and it's gonna do it for you. And now if we go ahead two frames, we can set this to one. And this is essentially the process that we wanna repeat for all of them. And now in order to save ourselves some time, instead of applying these animations to every single one individually, we can actually just copy and paste them between each other. So what you first wanna do is grab all of the objects within your 3D scene and then click on the object that has the animation click Control or Command L and then click Link Animation Data. And now if you look through each object, they all have the exact same animation keyframes, which is pretty cool and saves us a lot of time. And now what we wanna do is move these keyframes out so that there's a little bit of variation between all of our animated keyframes. So I'm just gonna start by grabbing some of these and move it to be maybe every 20 keyframes for now. So you'll notice when I move these keyframes around, because we've linked them together, they all now share the exact same animation data regardless. And whilst this was good initially, we now need to fix this. So we're gonna grab all of our 3D objects once again, head up to the objects tab, and then under relations, we wanna make these a single user. And now that I move these around, they're all gonna have their own different spots. So first one, we obviously want to be starting on frame zero. Second one will move to, let's try frame 20 and then frame 40. And then we're just gonna repeat this for every single one. So for the rest of these, I might just turn them off and we're gonna see how this looks. So now all of our objects are just stacking on top of each other. And that's because we need to turn back on our rigid body dynamics. So we'll head back into the physics tab and then we're gonna put this back to active, right click, copy to selected. Now let's try this again. 
and it's doing the same thing. And the reason that this hasn't been fixed is because under our rigid body dynamics, there's this little tab here that has its own animation system for the rigid body dynamics. So what we need to do essentially is go to the very last keyframe. We're going to click on animated and then the keyframe immediately following that, we want to turn it off. And we're just going to do this for every single keyframe. So go to that keyframe, keyframe it on, next keyframe, keyframe it off. And this would have saved us a lot of time if we had just done this earlier before moving the keyframes around, but that's my fault. Now let's try this again. So these are definitely popping, but it's a little bit too hectic. So in order to make some further adjustments, you want to remain in your physics properties. And then we're just going to head to the dynamics tab and we want to turn up the damping so that this slows it down just a little bit. So I might set this to something like 0.5 for now, and then we'll copy this to all of them by remembering to right click and do copy to selected. And now let's see how this goes. It's definitely looking a little bit better, but it's starting to shoot out a little bit too much in my opinion. So let's try turning this up once again. We'll grab one of them. Let's try setting this to something really high, but not too high, maybe 0.8. And then grabbing all of our objects once again, right clicking, copy to selected. And the key to getting this effect looking exactly how you want it is to essentially just mess around with these settings until you find the look that you're going for. So maybe instead of messing around with the rigid body dynamics, we can start to mess with our force field. So we'll go into our force settings and maybe let's try cranking this up to minus 2000. And we'll see how that looks. Cool, this definitely looks better. Perhaps we can try setting this to maybe something like 5,000. I'm getting really slow playback on this laptop, but you can see the effects starting to come together. And maybe just for good measure, we'll see what 10,000 looks like. Yeah, now these are really starting to stick together, which is kind of the effect that we're going for. The only thing that I don't really like about this is that these two spawn at different times. So what I might do is grab the two of these and push them both to be at the start. So they kind of pop against each other. Perfect. And this is pretty much the basis for the effect. Now, obviously there's a little bit more work involved using Blender to get this desired outcome, but it's not too difficult to achieve and it looks quite similar to the effect that we had achieved in Cinema 4D. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful and I look forward to seeing what you can do with it.